Hello, this is the American Dreamer Show, and this is Bill Sefikar with John Trackman. Here I am. And James Worley from Another World, uh, and uh, he lives up to that. We'll share that with you. You're from Another World? Well, we'll You're like the spaceman. Me, gonna... me, 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 me. <laughs> All right. So, today is uh, the American Dream of Rock and the DNA of Rocks. Combo, combo, you're getting two for the price I'm, of one. I'm already confused. Don't worry, John. We're going to get you unconfused and unlocked, and we're ready to go because there's a lot of stuff. I collected what I said I was going to do for the American Dream of Rocks. You saw them. It's on a thumbnail. I wonder if you can see some of the special sayings like dream it, believe it, and create your own sunshine. These are well, things. Uh, can you uh, explain a little bit to the audience about about the rocks and and why you're doing the rocks and what are you going to do with the rocks and where the rocks came from? And... It came from my head. Now that's the situation, <laughs> and I'm working on it. I'm going to unload my rocks from my head. And uh, now the thing is, we have a message, John. The okay. American Dreamer Show, and we talk about it and we explain to people how they can ex- express themselves and achieve their dreams and. I'm working on mine. You're working Through on Through rocks. Yours. Not rocks. That's the message. It, the podcast, YouTube channel, that's a vehicle to get the message across. And I enjoyed picking those rocks. They were heavy. But I found the sayings. I went to... Um, we won't even get into where the rocks came from. That's no, a whole, that's a whole no, other no, show. No. <laughs> but I went to Michael's and Joanne's, and I got uh, decals and things, and I made the these sayings. And the expressions. And that's why I did it. And this talking about rocks. How about moon rocks? The it's 50th, the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. Uh, yes, it is. July 19th. So this kind of ties in sort of, but it was probably completely by accident, right? Completely by accident, yeah, John. You really, know that. Yeah. But if you turn to page 148 of The American Dreamer, a look into the life of my father. I feel like I'm in church here. Yeah. Turn to page. <laughs> yeah. number. We have him. Him number <laughs> 148. And tell me what you see there. Um, is it going to be rocks? It'll be the moon, um, the Apollo 11 uh, with Armstrong. Oh, yeah, there they are. Look at that. The eagle has landed. Two men walk on the moon. Uh, Neil Armstrong and? I was, uh, I was six years old. And uh, also, Michael Collins was uh, the Lunar Moon, com- the uh, module commander. And don't forget Buzz Aldrin if you're Buzz Aldrin, that's what I want to say. that I didn't walk on the moon, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> well, Buzzer, that's Buzz. We well, like to say. Well, so, yeah, Neil Armstrong gets, gets all the credit because he was the first, first one, right? A small step. From how, did he get, how did he get to be the first one? Did they, did they, did they pick straws? Did they. they he was Robice. the most humblest because they said that they didn't even think he was a hero. He said he wasn't a hero, but he, he was a hero. But he was very modest and cool, calm, collected. But the thing is, in that, on the book, American Dreamer, A Look into the Life of My Father, Joe Baby. On page 148. He collected all these amazing newspaper, John F. Kennedy. That's the original newspaper article. Right. If he didn't make all these clippings, you wouldn't have a book. <laughs> Half a book. There were a lot of clippings. So, but the point is that when my dad was the administrator for the Hirschhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden on the Capitol Mall, Michael Collins, after his fame as the lunar commander there, became the first executive director, curator of the Air and Space Museum. Uh, perfect, yeah. And it was, yes, a very uh, nice attached, you know, the thing he was very well prepared for. Uh, very. Uh, he had a good resume. Uh, yes, here and on your out of. What uh, makes out. you think you're qualified for this position? Uh, well, um, I landed on the moon. I'm out of oh. the soil. <laughs> <laughs> so the the thing was that when my dad was a fledgling and his administrator for the Hirschhorn Museum, he started in the same kind of throes as Michael Collins. So when the Hirschhorn opened in 1974, they were finishing up the 
Air and Space Museum, which opened up for the bicentennial. I was in Washington, D.C. in okay. 1976. So my father, in a way, had a small part in helping using his experience in the Hirchhorn to help the Air and Space Museum, which is the most popular museum. When did the Air and Space Museum open? 1976. 76. Bicentennial. Oh, you was, just said that. If I was paying attention, I would have put two and two I'm together. I'm glad I had it. Yeah. Reiterate that because yeah. that's um, what the audience is saying. He just told it. He no, but they want to know it. That reiterate. Yeah. Okay, now things happen beyond our control, and on Saturday, July seventh, this past week, I was in my backyard, and it was the fifth anniversary. Of my dad's passing, Joseph Sefakar. It's been five years, yeah. Five years, July 7th. And I wasn't really in my backyard, but I saw the, what was the rustling of a white goose. And uh, I, I copied pictures today. These are some pictures. And it came closer. And I took out my English muffins that I was having for breakfast. This is a, you shared your English muffins with the goose. With the goose. And I'm going to show you this picture because I got it blown up. <laughs> okay, Tom, tell him. What, what do you see? What do you see? I see a goose eating a an English white, muffin. All right. You can see. You've got good eyes. <laughs> and look at this picture. I oh had my this God. blown up. Wait a second. You did not blow up the picture. Do you see what, he, what he's doing here, James? Yes. And... So this goose and I became good friends. And I was planning to go over to visit my dad at the cemetery here right. in, in uh, Clearwater. And I said, and about two hours later, it just said, maybe dad decided to beat me to the punch. He came over to visit me in the spirit of you think that your dad was, You think your dad was a goose? Well, how would you explain this, John? I mean, it, I never saw this goose. And I have the mallard ducks and yeah. squirrels and birds. This by, by himself. And he came up on the same day, my dad's fifth anniversary passing. Do 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 do. Mm. So maybe he's trying to give you a message, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure that message out. And I have a friend, you know, Dr. Korn, the, yeah. uh, the expert of public health and environmental health. He, I had lunch with him this week, and he told me about his, you know, the book, uh, the, it's a, a special collaboration, and he's been um, charged with books 22 and 23 to write these in the next couple of years. And so he was telling me that uh, he's going to get royalties for the next 20 years from these books. He's 86. <laughs> the next 20 years. <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> anyway, well, his family. But, but the thing is, when he heard about my financial condition, and he knew my folks because he was mm. in the family, he said, you know, your mother and father are on, on my shoulder telling me, Bill, you better take care of your financial. <laughs> so maybe that was how the, the goose was sort of meandering around. Yeah, the goose is maybe trying to tell you, uh, listen, the podcast isn't going exactly yeah, the not, way I planned, not, Bill. Send in money, because I want to <laughs> keep doing the podcast. John wants to do it, and James, so no applause. Just send the money, okay? <laughs> All right. Now, the next thing is horoscopes. Okay. I'm a cancer. What? I'm a cancer. 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 Not but cancer, no. Cancer. no. No, I thought you would say cancer. I said, well, you were saying? All right. Um, <laughs> and I believe that... I do astronomy, I know, with telescopes in the real world of stars and constellations. But I do my crypto quotes, and the horoscope is right underneath the crypto quote. So I couldn't help. And I don't take it serious. You know, like you say, you know, don't get out of bed or, you know, watch uh, ladders or whatever kind of thing. Well, that's not what horoscopes are. But, but they tell you, you know, yeah, stay that's... clear of this and... But these messages are universal, okay? Um, so I'm going to read a few of the crypto quotes, and then I'm going to show you what some of the horoscopes have. So this one is interesting. Norman Cousins, he's, he's a publisher, a journalist, said, hope is independent of the apparatus of logic. Hope is independent of the apparatus of logic, whatever that means. Okay, but the horoscope for that says, 
Stop to consider what others are going through. Offer an encouraging word. How you approach people and situations will make a difference in your relationship with others. Oh, you should have read me that before we started the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> you wouldn't have gotten this relationship, right? <laughs> All right. Oh, here's Bob Hope. Yeah, you can enjoy this. He says, I have a wonderful makeup crew. They're the same people restoring the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Well, okay. yeah, you know how many years it took to restore the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> yeah, well, this was an ongoing thing, yeah, too. Yeah, it was. So it says, sign up for something educational. John, you're a teacher, too. Motivational or physically challenging. Being active and spending time with people who make you think and encourage you to do your best will lead to positive personal changes. Now, I can't tell you the amount of personal changes, positive personal changes that has occurred from this room being associated. Are you sure? You and, well, yes, I'm <laughs> sure. What do you want? You think I'm self-doubting you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, th th this is one. This is cool. Um, if two people are planning a conspiracy while golfing, are they on a collusion course? Collusion course. <laughs> okay. And that wasn't even the crypto quote. But here is, a wise man never suffers himself to be governed, nor attempts to govern others. La Bruyere, that's a French guy. All right, and then the, uh, the uh, horoscope was, you can dwell on your glass being half empty, or you can make the most of your day and plan to get together with someone who inspires you to do your best. Okay. All right, so we're, we're cooking with oil. Here's another one. Great individuals, not great organization men, make a college or university great. Harold Woods. Okay. And one last thing. Your changing attitude may confuse someone you live or work alongside. Try to remain consistent or withhold your plan until you're ready to take action. Do you concur with that, John? That's, that's for you. That's not for me. <laughs> no, that's, for me. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You would agree with that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I think I've uh, had my limit there. I think you beat that horse. <laughs> okay, John. Thank you for that. <laughs> and I want to. I'm going to ask you because uh, this first song that I'm going to be singing is John Denver, as you are so enamored with. Um, and I know that you. It, it's about our interrelationship with a family and people. And you had a visitor this past few weeks. I did. It was my sister. Oh, that's so special. You enjoyed that? Her of course, time? yeah. I saw some. I visited with her, and then she visited with me. Her, you're visiting up in New Jersey. Yes. And then yeah. she came down here yeah. to Florida. I dragged her down here. I, I warned her that, you sure you want to come to Florida in the middle of July? I don't want to hear it's hot once. Of course I did, like the entire trip. But, um, but yeah, yeah, we had a good time. Well, I want to tell you, I came down 36 years ago. In July, July, I stayed for July 4th, and it was a test. You don't know what well, maybe what she, if she can adjust to the heat at this point. Oh, she's not staying. She's not coming. Well, I said, she'll be I, a snowbird. That, that, could, that could happen, but she's not going to be here in July. I remember seeing again. the Florida Orchestra down at Coachman Park, which uh -huh. you know, on the water, beautifully bellowing clouds up to the sky. I said, I'm here. I'm coming Coachman's back. Coachman's Park. Let, let me just, uh, a little um, information about Coachman's Park. They had a, an old building, the Harborside Center, whatever it is. They knocked it down. And uh, it's gone now. And in its place, you know what they put in its place? The, clear, the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. That's no, 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 no. The, 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 the building that was in Coachman's Park, this is in downtown Clearwater. Yeah. They tore it down. You know what they put in its place? Yeah. Nothing. It's part of the park. They put grass down, oh. and it's a beautiful view. I was like, that's a valuable place to land, and I'm really glad that, that the city of Clearwater had the foresight had the foresight to keep it and, and to not could... sell it to anyone else. Yes, which we know. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to get into that, but yeah. All right. <laughs> well, um, hey, James, uh, you're, you're, you're an out-of-this-world kind of guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, did you have any visitors that came in for a landing? <laughs> Uh-oh. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> what is that dinging? <laughs> Who's dinging? I'm a dinging. All right. So, did you have any... Uh... <clears throat> All right. What? That, that means... James? 
Nope. No visitors? No, I guess not. Okay. You never know. You never know. All right. Well, this... nothing, nothing, nothing. How you say nothing? Not. Not. Net. Net. <laughs> so what, what's next in, in this exciting right. show? Well, I'm, I'm doing this song, Eli's song. Right. And it's dedicated to my dear friends, David and Hyun Kalin, who celebrated their 21st anniversary this past week, and also with their son, Avi. And then buzzer Bob Richards, his uh, grandson, Jude, had his third birthday. And my very dearest niece, Diana Jill, birthday on July 14th, which is a Bastille Day. So, a any other birthdays that maybe happen in July that you can think of? Yours? Mine. Yeah, my birthday. Oh, wait a sec. Oh, let's stop the tape. July 2nd and July 12th. 12th. Well, we have to have a party. We're having a party, maybe not after the show, but I promise I'm taking you guys out. We'll go to McDonald's We're, or Wendy's. What's the problem, James? You don't want people to know when your birthday is? <laughs> Come on, what do you... <laughs> All right, but, but the point is this, that this song has such a special meaning. I haven't had a real one in many years. Well, that's your A uncle. real one what? <laughs> All right, anyway, for all the children whose life had made a difference to their parents... Okay. This Eli song. Beautiful, beautiful song. Um, There's a song called Eli's Coming by Three Dog Night. Yes. You could have done that one. No, I couldn't. Eli's I, I actually, Coming. I have you know that the, song? I have, yeah, I have the, uh, the sheet music. So Eli's um, Coming, hide your heart now. Eli's Coming, hide your heart now. Well, you can do You the didn't next think I would know a song that old, would you? No, I think you did very nice. Yeah, all right. You can do it next time. Okay. So this is Eli's song, and we're going to do it. And I'm going to say that we're going to upload these songs on uh, my YouTube channel, which is Bill Sefakar and Spreaker.com. Um, how do you spell that? Spreaker. No, how do you spell Bill Sefakar? <laughs> Sorry. S is in Sam, E, F is in Frank, E, K, A, R. Thank you. That's the one my dad really said. Born in the month of June No silver spoon to help you out Your mother had you naturally Naturally is the way you came You know your own mind and you show it to me. Give me a little high sign when you want to be free. And open up my eyes to the wonders that you see. See the airplane fly. See the trees rush by Be brave and strong When you hurt yourself And don't you have a worry in the world For the love that's been given you Is the one thing strong 
Eli's song could be every song for every child. So, John, get back into this. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, we uh, had some crypto quotes, discussed some spirits. Of, um, and the beginning worked for me. I'm just going to give a teaser. Na, 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 na. Uh, 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 uh. And my sister, Bonnie, thought enough of me or of what I had accomplished in the real world of the absurd <laughs> that she put together. She said, you might have, you should have a podcast someday, Bill. And you're like, what's a podcast? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> it just came cute. out of my head. Yes. and she, <laughs> That was 30 years ago. Yes. And yeah. here it is, Bill's Adventures. Well, it wasn't Bill's Adventures. It just is Billy's Stories, uh -huh. collected by his sister, Bonnie Sefikar Landau. In honor. What My year is this? 20, 29th birthday. 29th birthday. So, so like 10, 10, 10 or 15 years ago? Volume one. <laughs> We're up to volume XIX. You know what X? That's 19 in Roman numeral. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, buddy. So what is it that... that, that she wrote about. Okay. It's, so it's, it's in a folder. Yeah. yeah and and I, what does it say? I'm going to share it. I'm going to be uploading for my... July newsletter, which is going to be the American Dreamer book, and it that's why for you me. said it's a teaser. Yes, and so I'm going to have excerpts. Actually, the first volume had a few of these stories, and I'm going to show about what else has been. Remember the picture I had of Dennis the Menace? It was my he's my alter hero, alter ego between him and Peter Pan. You know, the either one. <coughs> but um, Dennis the Menace is sitting in the corner and he turns around he's in his rocking chair you know his mother put him in the corner and he said how come they never catch me when I'm doing something good right <coughs> how come we don't catch you when you're doing something good Bill because I'm out of control, <laughs> and I put everything together, mind, body, and spirit. When you're dealing with mind, body, and spirit, John, there's a lot of things going on. <laughs> Bill's holding up a giant, a giant coffee table book. Mind, body, and spirit. So that's what I indulge in, and I have excerpts from people that have written about that. 
and I will share it to you not on the um, how the spirit, self, and soul are connected, the difference between the mind, brain, and body. Mind is the beginning, soul is the end. Blah, blah, blah. And I have backup stuff on this. We're going to share so it. Is this a teaser also? No, that's it. It's teased. <laughs> out, of, out of control. Um, but I'm going to share something with you because I showed you this picture, which I am going to give you. This is the iconic group of rock stars of the 60s, 70s, and You're 80s. You're dropping Could, a bunch of stuff on the right, ground. That's all right, but you can tell everybody what's on that. <laughs> what's that? Maybe that. Yes, buddy boy, take that. And James? It's a picture from the 80s, and it's James. a group shot. And it looks like uh, on the far, uh, there's two rows. On the far left is Tina Turner uh, sitting on Mick Jagger's lap. And then there's Madonna, very young Madonna, uh, with, a, with Bob Dylan has his arm around her. And then in the top row, we have uh, Keith Richards, uh, Hall, uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates with really big hair. <laughs> and uh, that looks Afro like looks like Ken Afro. and that looks like uh, is that uh, Ron Wood? Yeah. From, okay. Uh, so so three uh, uh, three Stones. fifths of the Rolling Stones there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And you got this where? This was at the Holocaust Museum. Oh wow! That's Florida awesome. Holocaust. It was so awesome, John. I wish they could keep that exhibit because it was a tribute to Bill Graham, and Bill Graham was one of the biggest promoters during the. 60s, 70s. Jewish, of course. Right, and he was an immigrant. And yes. It, it, it was, what, what country was he from? Uh, Germany. Germany, okay. And what happened was he had this accent, and it talks about it. He wanted to get that accent out, like you know, yeah. anybody coming from another country that's a stigma. So he got to, he took classes. He went to Clinton, DeWitt Clinton High School, and it looked like the same kind of yearbook that my dad had. He was a few years... Uh, uh, younger than my dad, but it was so wonderful, and he performed with all the great. He put these uh, concert together with. I can, rem I can remember having. I have ticket stubs with his name on it. Oh, for really? sure. Oh, yeah, could you bring was, that in for uh, me? I, I'll bring you my whole box of ticket stubs. Oh, we'll do a whole, the whole show box. On it. <laughs> I want to see it, everything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ticket but, stubs from concerts. Is what, no, I'm, what I'm talking about. Bill Graham. I'm going to yeah. pay money for Billy that. Graham presents. Not Billy Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Billy Graham. No, it's Bill Graham, yeah. yeah. And um, it's such a beautiful story. It was two floors of exhibits and music. And then they. Is this a limited engagement? It. It was, was on a Saturday night before the exhibit was going mm -hmm. to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay. You know, Canton, Ohio, whatever, yeah. Cleveland, whatever, Cleveland. And they had a musical group that was, a, the, they were dressed up like, you know, the 60s, 70s. And this is a picture. They were in uh, their uh, attire, you know, uh, with uh, all the kind of stuff. That would be attributed <laughs> 70, to the 60s, 70s. Right. And they even, in the, in the group, they had all these, they did the tribute, a tribute band. They had a Janis Joplin woman. She sang, I have it on video. I might just. No, 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 Yes, John, I want you to do a Janis Joplin. I can do a Janis Joplin. You certainly. By the way, I have an update on the Woodstock Please, it's, I know it's, it's not. It's not good news. I know it, it doesn't look like it's. Yeah, it it it, it may still happen. You know, it's probably going to happen in an arena somewhere, or in somebody's private property. I, I have no doubt that they'll pull something off, but it's 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 not it's not going to be what they want it to be. I, maybe they should have started planning it three or four years ago. Um, but yeah, the Woodstock is. But on the other hand, there is a great event coming up that Bill may want to participate in. This better not be political. Uh, there's a lot of people that are gathering up. No, together we're not going to Area 54. To rush Area 51. We're not going to Area, area right, 51. Let's, let's area get back. 54. That's that's in Let, New York. I'm going to Studio 54, <laughs> Studio 54 New 54, York. Yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> what I wanted to share with you because we got about 15 minutes and uh, we got a lot of stuff. Um, so I had lunch with Dr. Corn, my uh, mentor and uh, the expert on uh, global warming. And one thing that came out that pissed me off so bad. Sorry. You know what really pissed me off bad about the global warming is the global warming in this room right now. Well, stop it because <laughs> I'm going to blow. I'm going to. <sighs> anyway, they're having a problem with the honeybees, that uh, their hives are being 
decimated all over the world. And you know, John. It's, it's, a, it's a domino effect. The bees go. Oh, my life is built around it, honey. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's a whole evolutionary phenomenon. And oh, that, if, if we don't oh, have bees. Oh, and pollination. It's pollination. not just honey. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I, I am jealous because I want my honey, but, you know, I'm self-centered. Yeah. But it affects everything from all the vegetation. And, you know, when they have a sale at this end on uh, Walgreens or CVS, I get two or three at a time. They're three ninety nine versus seven ninety nine. And I got how many do you think I have in there? In I don't know. It, a it, lot. It's like the it's like the dungeon of excess food you have. Honey, there. honey, honeycomb. <laughs> All right. So we got to do something about this global warming. I hope. All right. So getting back on track. Here we yeah. go. All right. So I have this thing that I wrote a poem. Wow. I think we have a... a, a <laughs> James does have some visitors, visitors from uh, the outer space here. Yep. All right. So this He's is my Earth man. song. Yeah. It's a poem I wrote. I was in a very deliberate mood. I, I was hurting, and I, and I tried to put it down on paper. And it's called Earth Song, okay. not Death Song. So you can... How can we save the world? How can we save the world from drying up, from dying up? We need to help. We need to make a difference. Everybody, take a second. Take a minute. Take an hour. It's all up to us. What you've done lately, what have you done lately? That's the answer. Do something now. Don't wait. Don't wait. It's on your conscience. It's on your hands. The blood of everyone that has suffered. Animals can be seen suffering. Humans can be seen suffering. And that's a beginning. I've seen pictures in the, on the television, the night, late night show, of animals eating plastic on the water, and they don't know what it they is. They don't know what it is. And they, and the, they get dying. They, 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 well, so. well, look, well, look, now, you have to say now, the global warming is one thing, and litter on the beach is another. And environmental pollution. How about, but, how about the birds that pick up? Uh, hot cigarette butts. Well, yeah, yeah, no, it, it's but but I have to say that the environment, be, because people have been educated and because things aren't as bad as they were when I was a kid. And when I was a kid, the Passaic River that ran through Jersey, it was terrible. It was dirty. You could pretty much walk on it. There were tires in there. It was terrible, and it was it was like that. There was a it was a lot of sewerage and stuff like. There's there's a lot of regulations against that now. That's right. And, and there's 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 been a, there's a Improve, lot of there's a but, lot of improvement. But, but it's it's, still, it's no it, it's you're right. We're but, hurting. We're hurting. There, so that's what I'm right. I'm going to do half of it this time. It says, it's on your conscience. It's on your hands. The blood of everyone that has suffered. Animals can be seen suffering. Humans can be seen suffering. It's up to us. It's up to us. It's up to us. What have you done lately? Have you cleaned up the environment? Have you made a statement that you are part of the plan to help? You can do it. We can do it. Take a second. Take a minute. Take an hour. Don't let another day go by without giving a try. It's, that's what we need to do together, brothers and sisters, not just our country, but around the world. Okay, that's halfway. And <laughs> you mean there's more? <laughs> no, not this time. You're lucky. I'll finish it next time. So what... I want to do on the second song because we um, have, um, <clears throat> uh, you remember when we, remember with um, Elton John when he couldn't uh, um, uh, appear at the uh, uh, Amelie Arena here in Tampa? Was, I, I did that song as tribute. Yeah, yeah. Well. You going to do Elton John song? No, we're going to be doing, <laughs> a, a <laughs> well, we're going to do that some other time. But we're going to do a song for, the fact that there might not be a Woodstock. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, uh, David Crosby has a, a documentary out. Yes, and he has a new album. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Yeah. Well, this is a Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young song. And this was one of my first guitar books that I bought. And you can imagine this was their breakthrough, breakout album. And, yes, thanks, John. And uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. And, uh, <clears throat> um, oh, here's my Winnie the Pooh that I, I'm looking for my capo. 
We turn the poo corner. Yes, and it makes noise. I fix the battery, and he does all kinds of things. And uh, I'm going to do that with my uh, song, uh, Return to the House of Poo Corner. Does he keep you awake at night? No, no, because I keep him away at night. I go, <laughs> I don't sleep that great. <laughs> so, and he says, oh, let's return to Poo Corner. I can't sleep here. <laughs> anyway. This is called The Lady of the Island. And we've done some amazing romantic songs, but this really... Oh, this goes up there with um, Longfellow Serenade and uh, Simon Garfunkel, or Emily's, wherever she may be. And Okay, so this is a beautiful love song about Lady of the Island. And I hope I do it just like... Stephen Stills and Neil. <laughs> so, oh yeah, that's is, it has a capo, so the capo has to be up on the right fret there. Is that what that thing's called? Yes, the capo. It just develops, uh, changes the pitch. It's a beautiful song. If I do it halfway decent. <laughs> Holding you close on the stirpes. For fire, the pressure in my chest as you breathe in my ear. We both knew this would happen when you first appeared. The brownness of your body in the fire glow Except the places where the sun refused to go Our bodies were a perfect fit in afterglow Letting myself wander through the world inside your eyes. You know I like to stay here until every tear runs dry. Do 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 do. Lady of the Island. 
wherever she is, whatever island. Could be Manhattan Island. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> New York Island. I've never heard that song. Well, you Most it. of these songs that he's done, we've yeah, never yeah, heard. I have my own <laughs> eclectic approach to this stuff, you know? Part I've, of always, the, I've always heard of the band, I but I never heard of it. I think it was the second the, or third verse that had me a little confused. Was that... Well, join John. When I'm forced to pee? Join the club. What? That I, lyric. Was no, it when you, I was you, forced you, to pee? You got or? that mixed up with a Bee Gees song. Oh. Oh. All right, anyway, I want to <laughs> share something with you because we've got a few minutes left. I'm hoping next week uh, I talk to... Natalia Jimenez, a very dear friend. She worked at the uh, legal firm when I was working on getting my ex from China, <laughs> and she was very helpful. And she's one of the people that is signed into an American Dreamer. She has as she's part of... She's a subscriber? In addition to that. She does real estate, and... Um, it's the she's the manager for uh, a, a realtor mar and marketing uh, here in Tampa, and her phrase is "turn your dreams into reality and get yourself a home and you know property and stuff." And I think there's a, a thread there, a lot in common, and we're hoping to have her on the next show, and she's going to talk about getting your dreams. Is she going to sponsor the show? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm thinking there's some real estate dollars, maybe. Um, got, uh, she's going to find a nice home for you, and you guys can thank her. <laughs> so, but that's we're going to work a, on. I already it. have a nice home. Thank you, though. A bigger home. We're talking no, 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 bigger. No, no, no. All right. Oh no, no, no. All right. But anyway, uh, Miss Jimenez is going to be here. Natalia, dear friend, and she's a very good person to have a chance to get a give a give and take on. How to get your dreams. This is one of the biggest dreams in people's minds. How to get that home. First home, new home. Okay. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to take a minute here to... Uh, <clears throat> oh, I just opened this. August 29th, Martin Luther King, one of his phrases... I say to you today, my friends, that in spite of the difficulties and frustrations of the moment, <laughs> I have a dream. I still I have a dream. But he, not just, he says, I still have he a dream. still has a dream. Okay, because that takes it. And uh, Walt Disney, it's kind of fun to do the possible. Impo no, impossible. That's right. Because that's what he did. That's right. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. We do the possible. Oh, here's Buddha. He's always good for one <laughs> Food is always good for a quote or two. <laughs> we are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. Okay, well, let's make the world better. How about that, John? Let's. And I'm going to upload some of those stones that I worked so hard in the phrases. <laughs> you <laughs> gave me stones. <laughs> you're going to have gallbladder yeah. stones. <laughs> so, and keep laughing and, 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 and uh, smiling. And uh, you guys have an assignment talking about stones. I would like. I'm not picking up any more rocks. All right, don't you have, <laughs> you have a choice? You can either bring in a stone or bring in a phrase that I can put on a stone. And if anybody has the guts and glamour to send in a phrase or something that we could use, I would have. Oh no, I'm going to actually take a rock and paint it. Yes, yes, creatively. Yes, yes. I'm not going to buy some cheap stickers and put them on there. <laughs> <laughs> On the cheap stickers. <laughs> Believe it. Do it. Dream it. Yeah. Okay. So, go forth. Make your dreams possible. We're going to help in our own way. We're going to keep our dreams alive. Yes, I'm wearing my dream weaver. Gary Wright, the dream weaver Ooh, guy. Dream Ooh, weaver. Uh, and and love is Yes, thank you, John. You can sing that for next time. Thank you all. Everybody, go forth and bring love into the world with others. Make your dreams come true. Okay, on that note, let's have a good week or two and we'll come back with some new stuff. Yes, he was one of the new age kind of people. Okay, we're off to a new planet, a new galaxy. Back to the future. This is Bill Sefikar, your friend with John Trackman and James Worley, who's also out of this world. Have a great week or two.